bought the car in 1957 for $40 when I was a junior in high school. Nothing special about it, small right. truck, mini pickup, but it gets me there. The, <laughs> the memories are, you know, probably for the first year to two years of owning the car, uh, it was still, every time I hit the accelerator to the floor, I would just, it would just involuntarily laugh. Like it was just, it was amazing. The classic American car. For most people over the age of 30, an automobile is a cultural icon that drives that American dream. No invention stands out like the car. It takes us from downtown to the suburbs. It carries our friends for a day trip. And it can take our families back east all the way out west. But what exactly is it about cars that makes them so appealing to adults? Why do they care? What is driving their interest under the hood? This documentary isn't about the cars up until now, but about the uncertainty of cars going forward. We met with adults, teenagers, and members of the baby boomers to truly investigate what the American driving dream was and where it is today. Uh, I, I was looking for a car that was high tech at the time, and then I saw this cool, you know, this roadster was on the news or whatever, and that was the worst because then I'm like, oh my gosh, I might have to buy this car and I have to find some money. <laughs> Uh, my name is Jim Tepper. I own a 2010 Tesla Roadster Sport. So I get in the car, and you know the sales guy's like, "Yeah, here, just you know, drives like a car, just push this button, hit drive, and go." And then so I'm going, I'm driving. He's like, "Yeah, push the, uh, push the accelerator down all the way." And so I hit it, and and uncontrollably, I just started giggling, like laughing. It's the weirdest thing. And I'm a car guy. I really love cars. And uh, after I after I did that, I thought it was really neat to kind of experience that. Uh, she's been very dependable, she does have a personality, if she feels like she doesn't want to run, she won't. It wasn't a dream car because it's always been my car. It's a 1931 Model A Ford Coupe, it has a name, it's called My Girl, I've always referred to it as My Girl. Uh, so when things get a little tough, I walk out and I tap the finger and I have my girl with me. It's like petting a cat, like a dog, it's my girl. I had, I mentioned I had a Porsche and I thought, oh man, this is going to be the ultimate vehicle. I'm going to love this thing. It was a disaster. It was breaking down like every month. I remember I had to buy this part, it was a starter. I bought this part and and this is way back in 1974. Cost me $175 in 1974. Now that'd be like what, over 500 bucks probably, you know? So it was just, it was just draining me of cash. So high insurance rates, you know, it's kind of fun for a little bit, but not the best car. Went from that to my all time favorite car, which is a 1978 Jeep. I, I'm the original owner and I bought it uh, many years ago, 40 years ago. And my dad and I used to go camping, the family used to go camping, but I have special memories of my dad actually um, with the Jeep because we used to uh, go fishing together, we do some tent camping, uh, he used to like to drive it so we went on a lot of trails and we just had a lot of adventures, he helped me fix it when it broke, that kind of stuff. So. It's always got a special place in my heart because of my dad. Well, would you say that uh, people's opinion of cars is different now than it was um, when you were growing up? Well, I, I heard the other day I was talking to a fellow and he told me about his grandson who didn't care about driving. Really? And that kind of bothered me. I thought, well, that's a rite of passage. You get a, you get a driver's license when you're 16 and you get your car and you get your girlfriend and you go cruising. I get crazy. that doesn't happen these days. I don't know, and I was, I was a little bit um, taken back with that. This idea that our modern society shows a declining interest in driving is heard all the time nowadays. Millennials supposedly hate driving. Youngsters won't even get licenses. And teenagers aren't interested in getting a car. After all, car ownership peaked in the 1980s, and driver license acquisition has been on the decline since the early 2000s. But is there actually something killing the love of cars for our generation? No, I think I think that our age group drives. It's just I don't know. Driving's kind of interesting because I mean, for our parents, it was like a symbol of freedom, but for us, it's like oh, we can go places. Like at first, when I was like young, I'm like oh, I can't wait to drive, and then like I've noticed just like as I've gotten older, like it's a really big responsibility, and like 
it can be very dangerous if you're reckless, so I kind of fear it in some cases. I feel like I've seen a, a, a less interest in driving, like I have a few friends, like not necessarily at Servite, but like a few at Servite who aren't really interested in driving. They don't necessarily not want it, but they don't really care if they have one. That's what I've noticed, like even of my little group, Jacob, Hannah, Milla, only Jacob and I drive, and he drives because he works. Well, I don't know their thoughts fully. It could be other reasons that I don't know, but uh, as far as I know, at least for me, like it's like it, just fear of driving. And I think part of it might be online shopping. I mean, if you used to have to drive to the store to get your stuff, now it's like, oh, Amazon order. And you now it's kind of eliminated one of the driving forces. Maybe the actual fact of driving could become irrelevant because, like, uh, again, Uber might become bigger and autonomous cars are definitely a thing that we're going to see in the future, in my opinion. So. I think that one of the possible business models for Uber could be, like, you get an Uber subscription and you can call the car for, you know, basically however many times you want. And I think that could be a better alternative to people driving because people are unpredictable, chaotic, they make mistakes. And I think a lot of accidents are preventable. I don't know, I'm kind of afraid to drive, like, it's like, I live far away, the 91 freeway is like my only route to survive, unpredictable, and it's like, it can be hard to like put my trust in other people when like, people can do kind of like silly things. One time we were on a family vacation to Arizona and we were driving up to the mountains and uh, we're po we were uh, at a red light and a lady behind us just rams us, like really hard. And like, uh, no, no, no one was hurt, it was just a really big thud and it really like freaked me out. In the eyes of our generation, the demand for convenience and request of safety are not being met by the cars of today. While driverless vehicles may be able to fulfill the current gap, will the act of driving become a bygone invention altogether? Well, because I like to explore, um, my friends and I, just, we used to go driving a lot and we would pick little side roads in the mountains of Colorado. Uh, so one night we went for a drive and it was dark and we were on a side road and uh, uh, we were in the mountains but we kept driving toward the lights because we knew that the lights meant that, the, that that was the city and that would have been Denver. And we drove and we drove. It seemed like we were driving a very long time and uh, so when we finally emerged uh, from the mountains and uh, found the freeway, uh, we were actually about 60 miles away from Denver. Um, moving, driving toward Colorado Springs, which was uh, an hour outside of Denver. And then fast forward to today, and I thought it was really interesting to see how there were a lot of people that were 16 years old, and they had no real intent on getting their license anytime soon. They didn't care. I don't need that. They license. No, no big deal. Or they're 18 years old. They still don't have a license. And that blows my mind, because I'm thinking the very first day you can get a license and drive your car, that's, you know, that's what you did kind of thing when I was growing up. Uh, but uh, nowadays, oh man, Uber, Lyft, you know, it's so easy to get a ride anywhere and it kind of makes it into almost maybe a commodity where the car is just this bubble and you're in the bubble and it takes you from point A to point B. I think driving will become less and less um, because I think the world has become smaller and smaller and people can see things that they didn't used to be able to see unless they physically went there. It's possible that cars could become today's motorcycles. Motorcycles are very niche, but they still live on in the hearts and roads of a small minority, willing to carry their passion onward to the season the dirty. Maybe the car will go the same way, maybe not. It's honestly kind of hard to tell. One thing's for certain though, cars have been going strong for a long time, and it will take a lot more than just a few apps to completely wipe out the passion for cars in our country. Sure, the youngsters of today may not be as apt to drive, but the American automobile itself will still manage to captivate anyone of any age. And then there's no noise, so it's like a roller coaster, so all of your concentration is on the acceleration instead of the noise and the shaking and stuff like that. So that's, that's an experience and a, and a memory that I'll, I'll remember for, for a while. There was a time when I took it to San Diego with my wife, and uh, the battery went down on a Saturday afternoon. No places were open and everything. So my wife got out and fished the car. And I got in and it started and off we went. She'd run along the side and jump in the car and off we go. But uh, she didn't like it, but she always remembers that. So we did that for the next two days. Well, my dad's passed away, and that's why it's even more special to me now. 
I remember all the times we had together, fishing, camping, uh, motorcycle riding, all that stuff. So it was a very fun vehicle and I still have it today and I still enjoy it. Are there times where you wish you didn't have to drive? <laughs> well, you know, sometimes driving six and a half hours to Flagstaff or uh, sitting in traffic on my way to work. Uh, certainly there's times that I wish I didn't have to drive. No, I think, uh, you know, driving, I think there's always going to be people that love to drive and have a passion for driving exotic cars and the design and the shape and the sound of the car. I think that's, that there are always going to be people that love that, but I think um, it will be a, a much smaller population in the future.